Hey, I'm Dave Arnold from Booker & Dax, and I'm at the Modernist Pantry Kitchen to demonstrate the Spinzol 2.0 that we're selling here, uh, Modernist Pantry, pre-selling. Uh, and I'm going to do, actually, the very first thing that I ever made in a centrifuge. It's called Banana Justino, but it shows a t uh, technique that I really like, which is you're going to blend a fruit and a liquor and get a clarified uh, liquor back out. And it's just very versatile. So we have uh, dark rum. This is 750 milliliters of dark rum and three Cavendish uh, bananas. And why do I say Cavendish? Cavendish, uh, you may not like Cavendish, but it has very low starch once it's ripe, and we want a low starch banana. So you want these uh, to be very, very ripe. Uh, if you use a green banana, uh, first of all, it's not gonna have much flavor, and secondly, it is just not going to get as clear, although I do have ways to uh, fix that. Then lastly, I'm hoping that if you uh, buy this unit, that you're also going to buy the ingredient kit because you're going to need some clarification aids. So on this, we're using an enzyme called Pectinex. It's going to break down the pectin and other fibers in the banana and allow the centrifuge to clarify it. So now you just blend the whole, whoop, it's fine. Uh, you're going to blend the whole thing. Thank you. And you want to give it a good blend, uh, right? In fact, you want it to be roughly body temperature so that the enzyme is working well. So I like to blend it a good long time. That's good enough. It's good enough. It could go longer, but that's good enough. Um, now, in general, you want to let the enzyme sit around for a couple of minutes uh, to kind of do its work in breaking down the product. But we're not going to worry about that. I'm just going to go through uh, the parts of the Spinzol. And by the time we're done doing that, it should be ready to go. So the new Spinzol doesn't use an electronic interlock. So you're just going to open the lid uh, using uh, the new interlock system. And then you get to it. Well, you, there we go. And pull out the rotor. Now, there's two basic ways we can do this. If we had uh, less than 500 milliliters, we could spin it in one shot. Uh, and in fact, even with, uh, we have almost a liter of product here, you could spin it in two cycles, and each cycle is only going to take about four minutes. Uh, but I'm going to show you continuous mode just to show you kind of what that looks like. So inside this rotor, you're going to see that there are three fins. You must have those fins in place. It's those fins that allow the rotor to balance itself, kind of like a, kind of like a giant uh, or a small washing machine, right? Um, and it's the self-balancing and the fact that it has this angle. It's this angle in the rotor that really helps this thing clarify uh, well, and that's part of the patent for the unit. So when you're filling it up, you want to fill it up. If you're doing batch, there's a little line in there, but it's going to be impossible for you to see it. But right about there, you're going to fill it up. And then whenever you're spinning uh, alcohol, you want to make sure you lower evaporation. And anytime you're using continuous, you want to put that, it's called the tube feeder in, put in the rotor, put on the lid. I'm going to put the cap on. That also helps prevent uh, evaporation. You're going to see we're going to pump with that later. And just press go and the unit is going to start spinning. Now it's going to take a little while, it's going to take about a minute to get up to full speed, and then you hear the speed slowly oscillating over time, and that is, uh, that oscillation is going to also help the clarification and stop vibration. So we're going to come back and look at this in four minutes. It's only been two minutes, but I don't have patience, and I'm sure you don't either, so uh, let's get this going. So I'm going to show you how the pump works. So you just put the tubing into your liquid, and then we're going to turn on the pump. And that is going to pump the liquid up this tube into the rotor. And then eventually, when the rotor is 100% full, it's going to start spilling out of here. And here we go. See how close I was to filling the rotor. If you get really close to filling the rotor, it starts overflowing right away. But now you have to wait for it because I didn't fill it all the way up. 
This knob adjusts the speed at which it's pumping. Right now it goes between 50 milliliters per minute and uh, 250 milliliters per minute. There we go. Now what you're seeing here is actually air bubbles, not banana particles. Um, so when it comes out here, it's still gonna look a little bit cloudy, but that's just the air from getting spun at high speed over into the side of the wall. So now if you were running in continuous mode, you would just walk away from it and let it do its thing. Some people who are running continuous mode do what's called a stripping run. So what they'll do is, is they'll run it through once as fast as possible to get out 90% of the solids and then they'll let it sit and they'll run it, run it again. We used to do that when we were doing like large batches over a long period of time. Another thing is, is um, it takes a very, very, very small amount of stuff to make something cloudy. Um, so the problem with doing a lot of clarification, one of the techniques people use at a bar is they'll just add uh, things like uh, the enzymes and the wine finding agents and they'll let the products just settle over time. And that does work, uh, but in general, your yield is, is very, very bad. It only takes a little bit of stuff to make it cloudy. Um, so what I like to do, if you have time, is you can do very fast, mostly clarific clarification. And once something is pre-clarified with a stripping run, then even if you don't want to spin it in the centrifuge again, once it's sitting on the shelf, for a day or two, you can get almost 100% of your liquid out, whereas you couldn't do that if you didn't run it through the centrifuge one time. So when you want to clean it, uh, this is what's called clean in place. So make sure that, make sure you don't start pumping cleaning water into the unit while it's uh, still attached. That's very embarrassing. I've done it more than once. So you just take the lid off, and then you put the tubing into hot water. You can use sanitizing solution. Uh, and it's going to clean itself. I usually set the pump on the fastest speed when I'm doing that. And you can see it's just pumping water through and cleaning it. Then once it's fully cleaned, lift it up. You put the cap back on, turn off the pump, and it's good to go. After you're done pumping, you should wait usually an additional three minutes or so for it to fully compact, and then we'll pour it out. When the spins all is slowing down, it doesn't slow down immediately, and that's on purpose. If it's slowed down too quickly, then all of the stuff that you've pushed against the side of the rotor would get kicked up again, almost like if you were to kick a snowdrift. So you want it to decelerate slowly so that the solids stay on the side of the rotor in what was called a puck. All right, so once the rotor has uh, stopped, you're ready to take the lid off. So just rotate the lid until it's disengaged like this. Then put the, the wrench in, rotate the rotor until the wrench clicks down. Now the lid pops off. Now in here is clarified banana rum, banana ustino. But the easiest way to do this is to just, in case a particle breaks free, use like a tea strainer and just pour it through. And look at that. All right. So just so you can see the difference, this is unclarified. To me, that's a nightmare. That's soup. Uh, then this is batch clarify, uh, continuously clarified. So it's clear, it's got a little bit of cloudiness in it. This will settle over a day or so. And for a lot of applications, especially not like uh, if it's gonna be only ingredient in a stirred drink, this is gonna be fine. But then the kind of um, best clarification you can get is uh, this batch clarification that you could read a newsprint through. And this tastes like an amazing marriage of banana and rum. And in fact, um, it's very much different than just adding clarified banana juice to it. The liquor and fruit, when you mix them together, they interact with each other, and the result is not the same as just adding an ingredient to it. So you drink this uh, like you would uh, an old-fashioned, but in this case with rum, I, I like it with a squeeze of lime, but some people don't, uh, over a rock. And that's it, banana justino. 
and almost no loss. If you want to see what's left over uh, from what's being done, uh, I could have poured a little more out, but that's it. So just the banana paste on the side of the rotor, and you lose almost uh, nothing. So it's a very good way to make uh, very high yield fruit liquors.